Sanyasa, its ideal and practice. A parting address was given to Swamiji by the junior sannyasins of the math, Belur, on the eve of his leaving for the West for the second time. The following is the substance of Swamiji's reply as entered in the math diary on 19th June 1899. This is not the time for a long lecture. But I shall speak to you in brief about a few things which I should like you to carry into practice. First, we have to understand the ideal and then the methods by which we can make it practical. Those of you who are sannyasins must try to do good to others, for sannyasa means that. There is no time to deliver a long discourse on renunciation, but I shall very briefly characterize it as the love of death. Worldly people love life. The sannyasin is to love death. Are we to commit suicide then? Far from it. For suicides are not lovers of death as it is often seen that when a man trying to commit suicide fails, he never attempts it for a second time. What is the love of death then? We must die, that is certain, let us die then for a good cause. Let all our actions, eating, drinking, and everything that we do tend towards the sacrifice of ourself. You nourish your body by eating. What good is there in doing that if you do not hold it as a sacrifice to the well-being of others? You nourish your minds by reading books. There is no good in doing that unless you hold it also as a sacrifice to the whole world. For the whole world is one, you are rated a very insignificant part of it, and therefore it is right for you that you should serve your millions of brothers rather than aggrandize this little self with hands and feet everywhere, with eyes, heads, and mouths everywhere, with ears everywhere in the universe that exists pervading all. Gita 13 13. Thus you must die a gradual death. In such a death is heaven, all good is stored therein, and in its opposite is all that is diabolical and evil. Then as to the methods of carrying the ideals into practical life. First, we have to understand that we must not have any impossible ideal. An ideal which is too high makes a nation weak and degraded. This happened after the Buddhistic and the Jain reforms. On the other hand, too much practicality is also wrong. If you have not even a little imagination, if you have no ideal let guide you, you are simply a brute. So we must not lower our ideal, neither are we to lose sight of practicality. We must avoid the two extremes. In our country, the old idea is to sit in a cave and meditate and die. To go ahead of others in salvation is wrong. One must learn sooner or later that one cannot get salvation if one does not try to seek the salvation of his brothers. You must try to combine in your life immense idealism with immense practicality. You must be prepared to go into deep meditation now, and the next moment you must be ready to go and cultivate these fields, Swamiji said, pointing to the meadows of the mat. You must be prepared to explain the difficult intricacies of the Shastras now, and the next moment to go and sell the produce of the fields in the market. You must be prepared for all menial services, not only here but elsewhere also. The next thing to remember is that the aim of this institution is to make men. You must not merely learn what the rishis taught. Those rishis are gone and their opinions are also gone with them. You must be rishis yourselves. You are also men as much as the greatest men that were ever born even our incarnations. What can mere book learning do? What can meditation do even? What can the mantras and tantras do? You must stand on your own feet. You must have this new method, the method of man-making. The true man is he who is strong as strength itself and yet possesses a woman's heart. 
You must feel for the millions of beings around you. And yet you must be strong and inflexible and you must also possess obedience, though it may seem a little paradoxical, you must possess these apparently conflicting virtues. If your superior order you to throw yourself into a river and catch a crocodile, you must first obey and then reason with him. Even if the order be wrong, first obey and then contradict it. The bane of sex, especially in Bengal, is that if anyone happens to have a different opinion, he immediately starts a new sect, he has no patience to wait. So you must have a deep regard for your Sangha. There is no place for disobedience here. Crush it out without mercy. No disobedient members here, you must turn them out. There must not be any traitors in the camp. You must be as free as the air and as obedient as this plant and the dog.